Let's begin by remembering, and you can jot this down for me and help me fill it in. Limiting sums, these things you had to look at on Monday, yeah? Give me a nod, give me a nod, assure me. Okay, great. Uh, limiting sums, they exist for some geometric progressions, GPs, but not others. What kind of geometric progressions have limiting sums? Because they don't all. What do you think, Isaki? Very good. The, in fact, the precise technical word we're looking for is convergent, um, as in they converge. Converging is just the verb. Now, we're looking for, what does convergent mean? We're looking for GPs that such as when you take one partial sum, then you take the next one, then you take the next one, they are getting closer and closer and closer to some specific value. And of course, we call that specific value the limiting sum. Okay? Now, uh, I won't put you on the spot, but I do want to get a show of hands. Who has the proof for the formula of the limiting sum in their book? Anyone got it? I, I, don't, I won't ask you to quote it, but I just wonder who's actually written it down. Any takers? Just look back a couple of pages. One or two hesitant hands? That's fine. That's okay. I just want to get a rough indication. Or did you have a question, Zachy? No, I, just, I believe. <laughs> I think this is it. Okay. Well, I think we need to all get it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this, and it's only like four or five lines. It's not a complicated formula. Um, we're going to prove it. It's not complicated, right? So here we're going to go. First, we're going to start off with this idea. What is it that makes a GP convergent. Um, it's something to do with the ratio. Do you remember what, what is it about the ratio that makes your GP convergent? It takes on certain values. And remember? Um, hmm. Go ahead, Mo. Between negative one and one. Between negative one and one, precisely. If we have a common ratio from term to term that essentially is making the term successively smaller. That's all we want, right? Uh, by the way, why don't we include the boundaries? Like, why don't we have less than or equal to? Why, why, not, why do we have to exclude those boundaries? See if someone else can help me out here. What do you reckon? You can, you can just think about it. What, what happens if r equals 1? What kind of series would you get? Uh, if our first term was 5 and r was equal to 1, what would the second term be? Five. Also 5. What about the third term? Five. Also 5. Does that series, 5, 5, 5, 5, does that converge? The answer is no, it's just going to keep on getting bigger and bigger forever. We just need it to be a bit smaller than that. Okay? Now, um, there is another way that we can say this negative 1 is less than r, is less than 1. It requires us to remember our absolute value notation. Did you get this in your definition on Monday? Is it ringing a bell? Your, your furrowed brow isn't, isn't <laughs> reassuring me, sorry. Uh, someone's getting it. The absolute value of r, we want it to be, because absolute values mean you don't have to worry about negatives. Uh, than one. Um, we actually want it to be smaller still, yeah, smaller, but this time we're sort of capturing the negative in one hit. Does that make sense? So it's less than or equal to one, right? So it's okay. We're kind of swimming in notation at the moment. What are we saying here? We've got a common ratio between each term. We want it to be small is another way to say it, right? Okay, so if this is the case, then what we can say is S, the limiting sum, it exists, for starters, right? And what it's equal to is, you take that partial sum, s of n, and then you just see what happens as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now we have language and notation for this, when something gets bigger and bigger and bigger. What piece or topic of math do we use when things get, thank you, parent, bigger and bigger and bigger? Starts with an L. Thank you. Think about it. Think back to calculus when we introduced that, when things go toward a certain value. Yeah, these are limits, right? So what we're interested, does this ring bells, right? We want to think about what happens to that partial sum as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Like just go to the end of it if you possibly can. So here is the nth partial sum, okay? So this is our definition for the limiting sum. In fact, it's the reason why we call it the limiting sum. It's because it's the product of a limit, or the result of a limit, I should say. All right, let's think back. What is our formula for the sum of a geometric series? It's that one with the fraction in it. Do you remember? Ooh, it, the n on 2 is a fraction that's going to appear in a different sum. Which one does the n on 2 come in? Do you remember? So the GP, what's the other kind? That for that's, that's for APs, yeah, arithmetic progression. So for this one, I'll give you a bit of a clue. It starts with an A. A, and then a there's some brackets, right? To run it off of you. Mm -hmm. Brackets uh, R to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so we've got two versions of this one, as you may recall. We could either do R to the n minus 1, or we could do it in reverse order. 
can anyone suggest to me why do you think I'm going to choose this particular version? They, they both give us the same answer. Why do you think this version might be more suitable? Have a look up the top. Yeah, Will. R is less than 1, right? So what we can do here is it means I can avoid having double negatives. They both, like we said, will give us the same answer. But I just, the fewer negatives I have to deal with, the better. Okay, fantastic. Now, here's what's great. Unlike when we first learned calculus, as soon as we write this, we can immediately evaluate the limit. We can just say, hey, look, here's that n. It's supposed to go to infinity, right? This thing here is some small number. What happens to a small number when you multiply it over and over and over again by itself a lot of times? It gets so small, in fact, it becomes, because we're considering the limit, it becomes nothing, right? Zero. Okay, so I can write that as, I'm evaluating the limit, a1 minus, what does it become again? Zero, all divided by 1 minus r. Okay, and we're pretty much there. Aren't we? We just have to say 1 take away 0 is 1. And this should be the formula that you recognize. This is the limiting sum. Okay. Now, I'm just going to briefly hit pause on this and see if we can um, also note. I think I need to just quickly turn this back on. Soup, soup. Let's see. I'm doing all my technology today. Here we go. All right. Now, I'm going to cover this up, but I'll bring it back in a second. What's this? This is our formula, our reference sheet. Okay, you can see it's got the year that you guys will be taking the HSC. That's slightly terrifying. Now, where's my mouse cursor? Let me find where it's gone. Okay, there it is. Okay, so have a look. Series of sequences over here on the right hand side. Now, I particularly want you to note a couple of things. Number one, have a look right down on the bottom at sequence and series. What's that? There, there it is, the formula we just developed. You can see why, let me zoom in a bit for you. You can see why I introduced or reintroduced this absolute value notation so you recognize it here. Um, but importantly, I want you to know there are no explanations at all given to you on the reference sheet for what any of these things mean. You have to know what they mean. This is just to aid your memory. The understanding is something we have to get. Does that make sense? And that's why we went through all of these efforts. But now you know where to find it. It's right there on the front page. Okay, so we'll come back to this later on. Can we quickly go through a very basic example? I'm going to give you guys, you can jot down, example one. I'm going to give you guys a convergent series. And I'd like you to, it should only take you three or four lines max. I'd like you to evaluate its limiting sum. Here is the GP I'm interested in. Could you go ahead, like I said, won't take you many lines, you've got the formula right here, just give it a go and raise your hand once you've got an answer. I'd love to have a quick look. Okay, so did you land? Is this where you got to? Right, in fact I have missed off a line. What is the final solution? It's a third, fantastic. Okay, now if you've been paying close attention, I want to kind of illustrate why this is happening, a way that you can gain a sort of geometric intuition for why this should be the answer. And I'm going to give you at least three reasons for that, okay? Number one, sometimes you get a question that is related to the limiting sum, but in fact, instead of couching it to you in terms of numbers, they'll give you shapes, and then they'll say, work out a length or an area that's formed via a limiting sum. So that's the first thing. Um, the second reason is you should always seek multiple ways to think about a single reality. That's kind of the superpower of mathematics, that you can think about things visually or arithmetically or algebraically and all the rest.